Hi folks, welcome back to another video. And um, I wanted to just tell you uh, a few things here before we get into the video here. Um, today's video has a has a message about um, about Uber and the Uber Eats Pro Card and everything. And I talk a little bit more about a couple of different issues in this video. But the real message of this video is actually on the back end of this video. Now, make sure you watch it all the way through. It's, it's not super long. It's, it's under an hour. Well, it, may, it might be a little over an hour, but I assure you, this is probably the most, in, most important video that I ever put out here on my channel. And... Um, for a myriad of reasons. And I just want to say this, that I give all credit to God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, okay? And um, for me having the courage to, to, to put this video here. Now, I just want to tell you that <clears throat> a couple of years ago, actually more like three years ago, before I even had this channel, folks, I um, I had another channel over on, on BitChute. And one of the reasons why I went over to that platform is because of all of the um, C-E-N-S-O-R-S-H-I-P, uh, C-E-N-S-O-R-S-H-I-P that was going on on, on YT, on this, ch on this platform here. Okay, and the reason I have to use, spell it out like that is because I'm trying to avoid the uh, the algo, you know what I mean? So, the, anyways, the first half of this message, like I said, is with the gig community and what, what we need to know about some things and what's going on with stuff that I mentioned in it. But like I said, the second half is very important. And the second half of this video is some of the type of videos that I share or that I have done on my other channel. Um, some of the videos that I post over on my other channel, I don't narrate all of them. But in this particular one, I am going to narrate because it's it's that critical, that important. And um, I hope that all of you believe what you're hearing in the video because it'll be to your detriment if you don't, Okay. And some of you will scoff at it. Some of you will just blow it off, shrug it off, and say, ah, nonsense or whatever. And some of you will cling right to the message because the Holy Spirit will put it on your heart to know that what you're hearing is true. And the reason I'm bringing it here is because I remember I told you that everything has to do with everything. Everything is tied together. What is the main business that we all do here are, you know, as drivers, if, especially if you're a delivery driver, Right. We bring food to people, right? We, we deliver food. F-O-O-D. Remember that, okay, f later on in the video. And don't skip to the back of the video to watch it. Please watch the whole video through, okay? It's important. Um, I appreciate that if you do it that way. <clears throat> so anyways, the, the whole thing is, is um, we are, we are going to be coming into some serious hard times folks like really bad in the future you don't see it now because everything seems to be normal everything's just wonderful isn't it right <laughs> and it's really not <clears throat> but it isn't going to continue the way that you think it is because a lot of things are going to happen and uh, I feel sorry for the ones that aren't prepared and don't don't know about stuff you know I mean I'm certainly prepared to a lot of ways but in other ways, I'm not. But the most important is spiritual preparation, right? If you love, know, and serve God. Now, with that said, like I said, the first part of this video is uh, all about gig economy, and I'm talking about stuff, and then, then we're going to lead into it. And the reason I left it in this video is because um, I wanted to ease you into it. You know what I mean? Because... Uh, you know, I don't want it just to hit you like a brick in the face. You know what I mean? Um, so I, that's all I got for this part of the intro of the video. So we're going to move on. Make sure you watch the back end here. Okay. I appreciate that. Oh, and one last thing. 
that video that video channel bit shoot over there it's my channel still exists over there i just haven't posted in four or five months now i think it is and i'm planning to do some more stuff but the problem is i i don't have the time to do it when that channel when i was doing that channel folks i had all the time in the world because i was laid off from from my job you know or from the, the gig economy and we were all receiving checks you know to take care of us but what was going on during that, the whole shutdown and all that? You remember that, right? Well, that's important to tie in to that to that end of this video, okay? So anyways, like I said, watch this all the way through, and I'll see you guys on the back side of this, all right? All right, let's go. Here we go. Okay, folks, I want to just show you. I'm in a shopping mall right now, and you see these two cars in front of me? Right, and then these two right here, this guy and this guy. This girl's leaving right now. But this is like a DoorDash convention right now. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of other, you know, cars in this parking lot. I, I'm not, I haven't driven around all of them to see. But this is how, I mean, you talk about saturation in the market. All of these drivers are sitting right now and they're not making any money. Now she just moved off. I don't know if she got that if she got a uh, you know a delivery, but I'm actually going to be moving out of this area pretty soon. I just wanted to show you, and you know you're going to see more and more of this of cars just sitting and not doing anything. When this does happen to you, folks, you need to get on the move and go to a completely different area because. This, this my market is definitely saturated. So I just wanted to show you a quick video, and because uh, the all of these cars, I know that they're DoorDash people, because a few of them, a couple of them, I recognize, and then I can see that they, they're, you know, they're all sitting here. Why are people sitting in parking lots? Because these are drivers. These are drivers using the gig apps, and they're not, they're not rolling, and they're not making any money. Anyways, just wanted to show you that quick video. I'll see you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. Welcome back to another video, folks. This is DoorDash Sucks Channel. You're listening to here on YouTube, where we expose the lies and the fraud of the gig app companies that you may be working for, no matter whether it's DoorDash, Uber, Lyft, Instacart, Shipt, uh, Vho, you know, and any of them, any of the apps, folks. And eventually, I will get around to uh, to critiquing them at some point. So, with that said. Uh, I wanted to just say, I've been testing out a little bit of a theory of mine. I don't know if it's true or not. I'm, I'm testing it, see what's going on. So I have the Uber Pro card, which I signed up for about a month ago, a month and a half, no, two months ago. And in that card, they have an ability for you to take out up to $150 in advance pay, right? And I was testing it to see if they would, like, charge any finance fees, almost like a loan, right? But essentially what it is is if you're hard up for money or let's say you're on the road and you blow a tire out or something happens, at least there's, like, some money there that you can kind of grab and put it instantly on this on this pro card. And then the pro card is supposed to give you save you money when you go get gas and blah, blah, blah. It's sort of like the DoorDash direct card. But what I'm testing out is... I've been taking it infrequently, like like taking the hundred. Like in my account, it only shows a hundred, but you can get up to one hundred and fifty. But the reason I take it is because, well, what I want to see is, and it seems that when I after I've taken that money, if I take a couple of days off and I don't use the Uber app and I come back on, Uber tends to to send a few more, or they tend to send you deliveries, you know, for Uber Eats, because that's all I'm doing. I'm not doing Uber rideshare right now. And obviously, Uber wants the money back that you took from them, right? But actually, in actuality, they've ripped us ripped us drivers off so much money that even if we took the hundred and never worked for them again, they've already stolen hundreds of thousands more from us, each driver, you know, over the course of the time you work for them. But the interesting thing is, is that because you have a deficit or a balance that's owed to them because what they do is they take the money 
and they put it towards the card of the money you owe. So like if you took a hundred bucks right now and you went and spent it and then you came out later on in that day or the next day and started driving, when you make money on there, it goes directly back to that card, the hundred hundred bucks that you're paying back, right? So my theory that I'm testing is to see if the algorithm picks up on the fact that you've borrowed the money from them and then says, hey, we want to get that money back, so let's start giving the driver money. In other words, it just like the companies can throttle you back, they can also make sure that you get a bunch of deliveries if they want you to in any whatever case it is, you know, especially... If I mean, if an or if an area is busy in its own right, if it's busy, a busy market, you're going to get continuous orders coming through, anyways. But um, if you're not in a busy market, I'm trying to figure out will it force some of the deliveries to you because it sees that deficit of that hundred bucks and they want to get the hundred bucks back from you. So. I don't even mind working like that as long as I can keep getting the hundred bucks. If if it if it forces the algorithm to send me, thank you. Uh, she's letting me go. If 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 it forces the um, algorithm to give me more deliveries than I normally get or whatever, and they're decent, you know, fares. Hey, I'll take that every every time. Um, so that's one of the things I'm testing out right now. Um, and I, what I did was I, I was on, I was scheduled for DoorDash today. It's a Thursday. Right now it's about 9.47. I had just completed a comment video that you guys are probably have already looked at. Um, and that was to do with one of the videos I did on exposing the gig tubers and stuff like that. The, the fluff run out of channels and things like that, right? Make sure you listen to that comment video because that was a really important video. You'll probably see this either later today or you'll see it tomorrow. I don't know when I'm going to upload this video. But anyways, I'm in the process of, well, I ended my dash because the morning sucks anyways. I only made $27 from like, I don't know, 7 to quarter of 10. I'm sorry, 7 to 930 and so that's not great. So I switched over to door, um, to Uber, and I noticed that on Uber, it's um, you know, it's there's a few coming in, and I hopefully it will continue to give me deliveries for the day. So, anyways, tell me what you think and the thoughts on that. Do you guys have the Uber Pro card? Do you borrow money from that if it's on there? You know what I mean, like bank out and use the money. Let me know in the comments, and let me know if you think I'm crazy for doing that. <laughs> I mean, I've done it already about five times. I've banked out and then put and then made up the money and it's gone back in. But if I can trick the algorithm into giving me deliveries, then that's a good thing, right? We have to use their own systems against them, folks. But eventually, all good things come to an end. So in other words, if they figure that out, that we are doing that, they'll probably make it so so you won't. But it's... You know, if they if they shut you off or deactivate you when you've already got the hundred back from them, then they lose they lose out on the hundred they could have stole stolen from you like they always do anyways, right? So with that said, I'm gonna let you go. Just this is a quick video. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys on, and gals on the next one. Take care. Hello, folks. Supplemental video here. Um, I wanted to just tell you about this order that I picked up on, on Uber Eats. So it was, it's a Starbucks order, coffee order, right? So I go in, the lady's in there, you know, and I, she goes, hi, can I help you? I says, yeah, I'm here for uh, so-and-so. And, so. and uh, she says, oh, yeah, it's right here. She goes, <coughs> we didn't know, <clears throat> we didn't know whether, we didn't know whether it was a, uh, you know, we didn't know it was a delivery. Order. I was like, no problem. She goes, let me bag it up for you, right? So I'm looking at it, right? <clears throat> I'm looking at the order. And one of them's like a caramel type, you know, latte something, whatever you want to call it, right? And the other one's a coffee, and then another one is a, is a different type of, uh, look at this friggin' idiot. These people, I mean, unbelievable. People just drive like idiots on the road. Oh, uh, I wish I had a dash cam and make a, a dash cam video of all the idiots on the road, you know? So, uh, <laughs> so getting back to it. <clears throat> 
So I said to her, uh, how, I go, those look kind of like they've been sitting for a while. She goes, yeah, they've been sitting for about 40 minutes. I'm like, 40 minutes, huh? So now I don't know what kind of a tip to expect on this, but this may be a no tip or a no tip order here. It was, I think it was showing seven dollars and change, seven fifty or seven forty nine, going a couple of miles, right? But it's pretty sad that, I mean. But on the other hand, hey, I told her. She goes, "Do you want me to make new ones?" I'm like, "Nope." I go, "Give them to me just like they are." And 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 she goes, "Really?" And I go, "Yeah." You know why? Because I go, that will teach a lesson, hopefully, to the customer when they receive like a cold coffee or a, or a drink that's just all mush and everything. It, because like, in other words, uh, you paid what you get for, right, in this life. And if they don't want to treat the drivers with respect and give us a decent tip for, for delivering to them, because everyone wants everything for free these days. They, you know, they, they, they think that we do this service for free, folks. Well, we got to show them that we don't. And that, you know, we're not independent contractors, but we are partnering with these evil companies for the, for the time being. But we got to make the most of these deliveries to our advantage. The only crappy thing here is that this person could probably pull back the tip on me if they wanted to. And and see, you see how it, they, they can take it out on the driver? They could take it out on me or anyone because they could just think that, well, hey, uh, I, I got my, my coffee cold. That, that driver doesn't deserve it, right? When in fact, it was sitting in there the whole time. And these people are lucky, lucky that I picked up their order because no one else would, right? And this happened to Gig Geezer on one of his videos. He was talking about it, uh, like it was a short I did in one of my videos. I, I put his short, the short video that he did in one of my videos showing that he took like a, a base pay order that was like 16 or $18, but there was no tip in there at all. And then the person called him and said, hey, where's my order and this and that, or texted him. And then he, he said, hey, uh, you know, I'm pick, I picked up your order. I want to know I'm on, I'm on my way. But, like, you know, it, it would behoove you to uh, put a nice, generous tip in there. And you might get your food a little faster, right? But people always, always, always want to blame um, the driver. And then the other thing is, is it's not just the customer's fault, folks. It's it. This all stems with the companies. It's the company's fault for making this type of stuff happen because they're greedy and they don't want to pay out a, a fair wage or an above fair wage to a driver, right? They want to blowball you with $2 and then they get forced to pay you 7 because the friggin' idiot customer didn't leave a tip in there, right? Yeah, we'll figure out what this is going to be. Hold on. I got to I got to drop this off. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to just keep the video going. I don't care. Let's see. <sighs> Unbelievable. And, and again, I'm pulling up to a beautiful house right now. I mean, I'm walking up to a gorgeous house. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. All right, so that's that's done. Now let's see what comes through, because in about a minute or so it'll flash through. I bet you it'll show two dollars or something like that. But then it takes up to an hour to get a tip. <clears throat> but oh, I'm surprised it came through as three fifty-eight. Okay, so see see what happened here, folks. Is there is it? There's probably a tip in there. It's probably four or five bucks. And the 358 is an unusual base base wage. See, the base pay went up as people were declining it. And there may not have been anyone in the area, because in my area there isn't a lot of well, actually that's not true. There is a lot of Uber drivers, but not a lot of Uber drivers come out early. They all go out at lunchtime or dinner time or whatever. So let me go into the earnings here real quick. And let's see what the breakdown is here. Okay, let's see. 
Yep. Okay, it was 709. So there's a 358 base pay and the rest is probably 3 and change. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. 3 and change. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So that's what happens. And uh, you know, I'm trying to I want to put some time on the Uber app just so I can get back I mean, so I can able to take out another hundred off of that thing. Um, and, and and the reason why, uh, look at this. Happy Thursday. Quests are here. Yeah, the quests are really great for them, huh? Look at this. 1,250 trips under your, what is this? What is this? Oh, look at this. They gave me the, they gave me the, uh, the 1,250 star treatment. Way to go. We think that you deserve some recognition. Really? You you look great behind the wheel. Keep doing what doing your best, right? Uh, but that doesn't reflect in our pay, does it, folks? I mean, do they really see they think that all of these bells and whistles of like all of this graphic art crap that they put in here is supposed to impress us to make us feel good? When it comes down to it, folks, it's the bottom line what's you know, as far as when you're working, when you're working as a slave for these companies, it's the bottom line what's in the money in your pocket. That none of this stuff, and this is this is the psychological operations that these companies use on us, right? With the diamonds and the pearls and rubies and gold and silver and platinum, it sounds all good. It's wonderful, right? But what's what's in your pocket, folks? What's in your pocket at the end of the day? What have you made to, to be out for 12, 10, 8, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 hours for some people? There's people that literally just stay on all day. They get up at 6 in the morning and they work all day. I mean, they may take a little break here and there, but they're just out all day just to make a measly 200 bucks if they can make it. Isn't it sad, folks? And this is what these companies have resorted to, to screwing the drivers. Anyways, I'm ranting here. I'm going to let you all go. I just wanted to show you that, like, that order that I took was was ordered 40 minutes ago because the lady said to me, what, what time do you have? And I was like, oh, it's 9.50. And she's like, oh, the order was 40 minutes ago. So that person waited 40 minutes to get an order. If they only had put in... Now, now, one last thing, because I got to mention this. Sometimes it's not the customer's fault. It can be Uber by hiding tips, by not letting the drivers know. And how do we know what's in there? So if we see a bad tip in there, or we think that there's no tip, we're not going to go get it, right? Because we're all learning and being programmed. We're programming ourselves. We're Actually, we're deprogramming ourselves from the from the friggin' brainwashing that all these companies do, which is a good thing. More and more of you are declining orders and deliveries, and that's helping us because it all it all starts with you, folks. It really does. It starts with you. You are the answer. Look in the mirror, folks. You want change? You are the answer to make change, to bring change to the community. Never forget that. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. Okay, folks, I'm glad you stuck around for this video. Hopefully you watched the beginning part because it had some important things about the gig economy and what I'm testing and everything. But this this back end of the video is the most important video to watch. And I'm going to narrate some of it, but I'm going to hold back until I have to, like, you know, come in and tell you a few things. And um, just know this, folks, okay? For those of you that are believers in God and Jesus and everything, if you say you love God, then you will read his word. You'll read his Bible, right? Because it, he, it's, it's the word made flesh, like it says in the Bible, right? Now, some of you are on the fence. Some of you are lukewarm warm Christians. And I think all of us at, at one point in our lives were, or we still are, and we need to move forward and become better Christians, right? Other people who are non-believers, you need to believe in Christ. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but through me, right? These type of videos, that this video that you're going to watch is the type of videos that I do on my other channel. So you're welcome to come over to Waking Up the Sheep. Just click on the About page here on my 
channel here on DoorDash Sucks. Click on that, and it'll bring you over there. Now, you'll see, like, some videos that are obvious there, but there's over five, 600 videos. If you scroll, you'll see them, lots and lots of them. And it goes back to three years ago, leading up to basically four months ago. And there's a big puzzle of answers there. Everything on there is what you need to know about the coming of what's coming and this and that. But there's so many new things that has even happened in the past four or five months. I can't possibly cover all that information. So the reason I'm bringing this video to you is because this has to do with your your livelihood, like your life, because <laughs> you can't live without food, right? All water. Uh, you can live without shelter somewhat, but you can't live without shelter. I mean, uh, water, food, and, uh, you know, there's other things. I mean, we need, we need God in our lives. God can do a lot of amazing things if we allow him to, right? But with that said, just to ease you into this, some of this stuff may be unbelievable to you. Like you may, it just may be far off and you'd be like, oh, that, that's because if you're not walking with the Lord or close with him, then he can't mold you and, and use you for what he needs to in your life. Because everyone in this life has a mission. But if you miss that mission of what God wants you to do, then you'll be left out in the cold. Okay. So to speak. All right. So. The reason this is important because this this stuff actually will affect you as a gig worker, as a delivery driver, as even a rideshare driver. Because there's a lot of stuff that is going to happen in the near future, folks. When I say near future, it could be anywhere from now that I'm making that you're listening to this video, all the way to three to five years from now. But I do not think it's going to be past that. And I, I think, and unfortunately, I think it's going to be a whole lot sooner. Okay. Now, one thing I'll say before I play the video <clears throat> is that food crops, right, that are, that are made, like, that are yielded every year, like from grains and corn and all, potatoes and all of these crops that are farmed, okay, are what's had they usually have a surplus of things to back themselves up from year to year so so whatever you yield in 2023 will come out in 2024 2025 in other words the the food system that we've been living on has been from 2021 2022 and now we're in 2023 but what happened in 2022 a lot of the crops failed across america and the world and there is food shortages. Everyone that goes into stores will notice that some of the shelves are bare or don't have certain items that always were there, right? And there's a reason for all of that. Although I can't tell you the full big picture here, you're going to have to fit all the piece of the puzzles in everything as you, you know, see fit. In other words, there's so much more of the story to tell you than just this video, folks. But I wanted to expose you to this so that you will do your own research and maybe God will move you in that direction to actually follow him and follow what's going on in the world. And this is a good source of information here. Now, although I don't agree with every single thing that Pastor Stan in this video is going like has said in the past, I mean, there's some disagreements I have, but overall he has a 98% awesome, great, truthful message. And when I say he does, he's not a liar, but he, he, he has differences of opinions and stuff. Okay. But none of that matters. What, what matters is the main message here. So it's real important that you understand going into this video, what, what it entails as far as, you know, please use an open mind and open heart here and use your, your, I mean, don't you, your, your intelligence is not higher than God's. Okay. Cause God says, my ways are not your ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Right. But if you seek God and truth and righteousness and all that, God will bring it to you. He'll, he'll help you. He'll heal you. He'll spiritually heal you. You know, you just have to open your heart to him. Okay. So, all right. So, Let's get into this video, folks, because uh, you're you're on you're in for a wild ride, okay? And you're gonna hear truth in here, probably for the first time in your life. But if you reject it, that's up to you whether you accept it, you know. Because 
you won't have to you won't have to um, wait too long to find out that what I was telling you is true and was true. Because when it does happen, you're going to say, geez, I should have listened. You don't want to be left behind saying, oh, man, I should have prepared. I should have done something, okay? All right, let's, let's play the video here. And thank you for watching, folks. I appreciate you. Because I love each and every one of you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't even be showing you this. I mean, love, true love is to try to help people in all aspects of life, right? All right, here we go. Prophecy Club, our topic today is contaminated food and a new dream talking about food lines with very little and sometimes no food. First of all, uh, a little... Okay, I got to tell... I have to interrupt here because I have to tell you first off, okay? Stan Johnson, which you see here, he has he has had a, a platform, a forum of guest speakers. He had over 130 guest speakers that came on to his show since the 19, the late 1980s to early 90s, I believe. And back in the day, when I was younger and stuff, I used to watch the Prophecy Club. I mean, because I was always drawn to these, to prophecy. I just was. I, I, I found it fascinating, but like I found it scary at the same time, because there's a lot of scary things in Bible prophecy. And I don't proclaim to know all the Bible, folks. I don't. But I do know how to quote some things. But it's more or less that, you know, I need to, I, I, I'm, I'm spiritually lazy. I need to read the Bible myself more. All of us are working. We're doing all kinds of stuff. But we need to get into the Word, okay? Number two, you don't necessarily have to belong to a church. Like, I'm non-denominational, folks. I grew up Catholic. But I'm, but I'm no longer Catholic because I don't believe in that. I believe that that turned into a cult. And the Mormons are sort of cult, a cult too. They are a cult. And I was baptized uh, under the Pentecostal church in 2017, but I am not Pentecostal. I did it merely out of, out of be, getting baptized because I wanted to do what God wanted me to do. I read John 3 and John 6, and it says, Lest you be born again of water and spirit, you may not enter the kingdom of heaven. And he was talking to Nicodemus, and Nicodemus was one of his friends, and he was in the garden, the cool of the garden, talking to Jesus, and he said, Well, Lord, how could a man do such a thing? Or how could anyone do such a thing? Uh, how could I go into my mother's womb a second time and be born again? And Jesus said, Marvel not that I told you these things, but that you do the will of the Father. So when I read that, that just basically told me, you know, you know what? Just humble yourself and do what he asks. So one day, a friend of mine asked me to go to church, to his church, and the Holy Spirit did the rest. And by the end of the, the, the sermon and everything, I, you know, I was actually frightened to go get baptized. You know why? Because the devil was putting fear on my heart, making me f fear getting baptized because he know the devil knows that that's the way to salvation. Now, I don't want to argue that point. That's not what this video is about. But I needed to tell you that background to show you where I am now in my life. And I'm a sinner just like everyone else. But I love God. And I do follow prophecy. Now, there are some whack job prophets and people out there that would deceive people. But for the most part, the Holy Spirit would let you know in your heart who is telling the truth and who is not. And that's not something you can just decide yourself. The Spirit of God has to tell you who is telling the truth and who's not. Not everyone has that gift, and I don't proclaim to have a gift of anything. I'm just a mere man, but I am a watcher, a watchman, and I am a messenger first. The channel, DoorDash Sucks channel, is really secondary or tertiary at this point. But I, I see now how God has tied all of this into my life to be able to bring you guys this because I have 1,258 intelligent people on this channel right now, okay? Give or take a few because there's some people that unsub or whatever. And some of you might unsub because you don't like this content, and I feel I feel sad that you do. You, I mean, I wish you would stay someday. If you, if you do unsub and you leave, you're going to wish that you did stay. 
And I say it humbly because, you know, the Spirit puts you on to certain missions in life, and this is one of my missions, to try to help people bring them to Christ. Now, I know, again, this is a little bit longer, longer intro of this end video here, but this is all relevant and important so you can stick so we can stick on topic. So let me just tell you quickly about Pastor Stan. Pastor Stan has over 40 years in Bible prophecy. He's had 130 guest speakers on his show. And some of them were prophets, others were just messengers and watchmen and whatever. But all in all, I have watched him for a long, long time. And I can tell if someone's not credible or whatever on his show. And there probably were a few people, maybe. But for the most part, 98 to 99% of them were all factual and true of what they were saying. So if any of you have never seen him, you can go to theprophecyclub.com straight there. Or you can look him up here on YouTube. He was taken off of YouTube for a while. And he, I guess he got reinstated. Uh, he's over on BitChute. And there's a lot of videos, folks, that I hope and wish and pray that you watch because, they, you know, even if you don't agree with some of the stuff, like, for instance, I, I don't even want to get into the things I don't agree with, but it, it this, this message is just so important, all right? So with all of that said, I'm glad you know that background. And one last thing, the person he's talking about, or the, the prophets, when he says the person had a dream right, which led them to this message that he's going to read. You know, in the Bible, it says that uh, was, old men will dream dreams or young men will dream dreams and old men will have visions, right? Uh, that would be very true in the Bible, okay? And d God doesn't just come to anyone, folks, and give visions and dreams. He's going to come to people who are following him and people who uh, love him with all their heart and seek him, with seek his face and all of the stuff that the Bible says, right? So it's just, like I said, it's so important. All right, I'm going to shut up. This is awesomely important. Okay, here we go. You hit, well, by the way, see how it says Bill Gates vows to pump something into the food, food supply to force the, the and the, the word is un-v-a-x-x-i-n- a T E D. I can't say that word, but you know the thing they've been wanting to put into your arm for the past couple of years. If you took that, um, I feel sad for you. I feel sorry for you, but you need to ask God to forgive you for doing that because it's important. Because it's it's there's too much information for me to tell you in this one video. But trust me, you don't want to be putting that into your body. And secondly. Secondly, they know people are not taking it, so they're going to try to force it through the food supply, and especially into meats, and they already have because some of the meats have had uh, found to have this stuff called uh, G-R-A-P-H-I-N-E-O-X-I-D-E, -E, right? I can't say those words, so you'll have to spell them out on a piece of paper, and that 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 two, those two words I just told you that I spelled out, they have metal and, and different things in them. And they've put magnets on the, on the meats and found that the magnets stick to that and draw out the, uh, the, the stuff that's in there. And this is, this is important folks, because you don't want the stuff in your body. All right. All right. I'm going to shut up. Here we go. <laughs> Just listen to this, folks. About the contaminated <laughs> food. This particular article says, Bill Gates vows to, to pump the anti-V into food supply to force the ingredients of the anti-V into all of those that didn't take the anti-V. Bill Gates says he's, I probably shouldn't say that, um, blank animals in England and manipulated their genes so that they will be more productive. How healthy will we be after eating animals that have received the anti-V? As you recall, 1 Timothy 4.1 says, In the latter days, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. If you skip down, it says, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. I've always wondered <laughs> why we would be commanded not to eat meat. And I realized after I read this, folks, what it's and let me read it now the spirit speak it 
speaketh expressly that the latter times shall come. He's talking about the end times, which we are in right now, folks. Depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine, uh, doctrines of devils. That means that these demons will work through a lot of people. That's why you see a lot of these politicians and people who run these companies, like the CEOs of all these gig companies and stuff, some of them are possessed. Now, you would never know that because you, if you're not walking in the spirit, you can't, you can't figure it out because these people seem to be normal, right? And it sounds all insane and crazy, doesn't it, folks? But it's biblical. So he said, So it says, the Bible says, forbidden to marry. And why forbidden to marry? Because so you're not mixing the genes and the, and the uh, different bad things to another person. And this goes all the way back to the Nephilim and the back, the, the original part of the Bible in Genesis 6. If you read Gen 6, I can't get into it here. But it's forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So who would know the truth? Thanksgiving then which would believe and know the truth. Well, that would be Jesus' followers, his believers, right? So it sounds all, it probably sounds like a puzzle to some of you, right? But the stuff that they're putting in these meats is not good, folks, okay? And it gets, this message gets worse. Because it's not just about that. But if I was you, unless you know an organic farm, uh, a local farm that does chickens and all of that, and you can get it right from there, I would stay away from, in the near future, stay away from the uh, meats and stuff like that and start maybe becoming a vegetarian because <laughs> you don't want to have this, uh, this stuff in your body, folks, okay? Now, this goes on to the food shortages. It leads into it. All right, here we go. Now, <clears throat> maybe I understand. Maybe that meat is going to be poisoned with the anti-V that they're trying to get into our veins. The article says, horrible revelation, the anti-V is now being put into the food supply, as in a poison, okay? Poison. It says the anti-V are being injected into livestock and companion animals. This means that if you consume the anti-V, the anti-V enters your body. Bayer agreed to to secure exclusive rights to biotech's anti-V technology and intellectual property for development of the anti-V for animal health applications. The company said their partnership is the first of its kind, hopefully the last of its kind, first of its kind focused on developing the anti-V therapeutics, therapeutics specifically for animal health applications, he wrote. Merck is already selling the anti-V for swine. Sequivity is the name of it, harnesses the, can't say that word, particle technology to create customized prescription anti-V against strains of bugs and the anti-V bug in swine. Now, I want to tell you some things, folks, before we move on, because this is important. This is why I'm critiquing this video, because I know some things that he's not mentioning here, because his videos are only about 30 minutes long and they're very short and precise, but he gets into other things in other videos. So basically, the the anti-V, when he says anti-V, that is the thing that they want to put into your arm and give you a J-A-B in the arm, okay? If you're following what, I, what I'm telling you, okay? Now, they're trying to do it to all the animals on the planet as well. Okay, and you might say, well, what's wrong with that? There's that disease is going around and it's killing everyone. Well, folks, you have been lied to, just like you've been lied to by the gig companies when you work for them in drive, delivering food, and they tell you all this crap about these programs. It's all lies, okay? Most of it is. Maybe not every single thing, but a lot of it is. But when it comes to this, <clears throat> they have lied to you from the very beginning. It's all about getting something into your system and it's not about healing you or taking something away okay and there's a reason for that but we can't go over the reason in this in this video why they're trying to do it because it sounds insane doesn't it and again if you have had any of this stuff you need to get on your hands and knees and say lord forgive me for ever putting that that's filth in my in my body okay and you're going to, and like, if you want to know more about this subject, okay, 
please come over to Waking Up the Sheep over on BitChute. And then not just my channel. There's thousands of awesome channels that are on BitChute. You could go to Rumble or D Live, but I'm not on any of those. I'm on BitChute specifically. But you could go and you can check out a lot of information. Now, there are there is some people that are out there that are, that are not telling correctly the, the right stuff. So you, uh, another channel that's a great channel that you should check out is called Space Busters. Space Busters, all one word. They're on BitChute. Check him out. The guy's name is Steve. And start watching, like, pretty much go. Don't watch the videos from the beginning all the way back. Go back to when the guy first did his channel and scroll and watch videos, and that'll explain a lot. But my channel has so much stuff, folks. It's not even funny. All right, let's continue. So now we're talking about having it in swine and also in cattle. And you can rest assured chickens and turkeys and everything else we eat is coming right along. This article says chickens starve at California farm and corn shipments running late. Just an accident or an on purpose? Foster Farms, which possesses about a million chickens and 12,000 turkeys a day, says it's had to pause some operations because of delays from Union Pacific. The plant processes raw corn into animal feed to sell. And it said it, it said in federal filings that meant cutting off its dairy farm product or customers from cornmeal and giving priority to its chickens, which start killing each other when they go hungry. I know that. This is the second time in the past year Foster Farms has asked the rail regulator to intervene directly because of Union Pacific's failure to deliver animal feed trains on time. Now, if you think about it, who owns the trains? That's right. The bad guys resulted in numerous instances where suspended this production and distribution of feed for tens of thousands of dairy cattle and tens of millions of chickens and turkeys. The company said in a letter to the regulatory agency. Now, do you, do you guys and gals realize that you may have heard reports even on television? Television will never tell you the full truth. They always lie to you, but they, they do bring out some truth in there. And some of the truth was that they a lot of these cattle farms and, and, and chicken farms had to kill their, their cattle, their livestock and all this stuff because of some unknown sickness, right? Or a sickness that they say is in them, which is another lie, folks. It's because they're trying, the, you know, in the Bible, right? It talks about in the book of Daniel where the devil will control all the wor world's wealth of gold and silver. And it says that he will have everyone bow down to the penalty of death by starvation, right? Because Satan is on this earth, basically. The, he's the one that controls this world, folks. This is why you see these, these gig companies, these app companies, they're just part of the problem. They're just... They, there's so many, so much avenues and so many uh, <laughs> roads you could go down. But the gig community, the, the transportation, that's just one sector. You have medical, finance, business, I mean, all, all kinds of different walks of life. But in our sector, we're getting screwed and shafted and not making the money that we need because these evil people who bow down to L-U-C-I-F-E-R, right, they bow down to him, and that's their God, right? So they control everything. And then you have corporations, like regular ones that are like Walmart and Target and all of these companies that have all of these people in of CEOs in, in the same place and positions of power. They're just in a different sector. But the food is goes hand-in-hand hand with transportation because if you don't have transportation to deliver food even even trucks that deliver food to the to the stores if they have you know there's a whole nother thing about diesel being shortages of diesel and diesel exhaust fluid and all the stuff that makes the trucks go if they can't bring the food to these stores then where are people going to have food right so it gets into it's really complicated but i don't want to go too far off i want to keep it on point here but getting back to what we do as work, we deliver food for the most part, right? We're delivery boys and girls, right? If there's, no, if there's very little food or no food, do you think people are going to be ordering DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber Eats or 
Walmart spark if they can't even get the food when there's nothing in the stores. Now, you might laugh and say, there's plenty of food in the store. You're an idiot. Yeah, there is now. But when, as time goes on, folks, there ain't going to be. And you're going to see this prophet in here, Jason Meeks. Okay, he's a prophet. And he gets visions and dreams. Okay? And he had a dream about... I mean, and this is this this is just one guy. I could show you thousands and thousands of other prophets that have had the same dreams, okay? But it's just that you guys may not watch this type of stuff. People don't even have time to reach research this. We're all out working 24-7. I mean, not 24-7, but you know what I mean. We're working. We go home. We're, we try to be with our families. We go to sleep. We wake up. We do the same thing, and we barely, the only reason you guys probably are allowed to or listen to YouTube is because you could put this on in your car and listen to it like as if it's a podcast, which is great, while you're working, because you're, you're moving from place to place, and that, that's the great thing about, about having an ability to, to at least listen, and that's another reason why the video portions aren't so much important for my channel as far as the message of the of the audio but in this case you if you if you're at home you can read the words here on the you know that he has and you'll see as it goes along but keep in mind folks there's a lot of bad stuff coming now some of you are wide awake i, I like ken tarabella she's she's one of my subscribers she's she's good ida hat there's all of these really great people here and i i really feel like god has brought you guys and gals together on this channel for this higher purpose this higher uh you know reasoning that god wants because god loves all of you you know god loves all his children he wishes that no one perish he does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked folks he wishes that all come to the glory and light of jesus christ right and this is truly what my channel really is about, folks. And this is why I'm, I'm opening up to you and letting you see what I have done and accomplished. And it's not me. It's, I give all glory, glory and honor to God. But what I accomplished over in that channel, because I had so many people comment saying, oh, I'm so glad you, you showed me and opened my eyes and, and it's changed my life. And I, I had a worldwide audience, folks. I had, well, I only had about under 5,000 on that channel, but I had a lot of views and I had a worldwide audience, Australia, England, I mean, everywhere. And it's, I'm not trying to like say, look at me, look at me. I did it humbly. I don't care. I mean, I do care. I want like billions of people to see it so they can get the message. But you see, we're a lot of, a lot of channels are being censored. You know what I mean? All right, let's get back to the video here. So here's three specific <clears throat> articles saying that they are messing with our food supply, specifically poisoning it. Article, when the whistleblower reveals what is behind the mass attacks on U.S. food facilities. Now, I can tell you right up front, as I read this, you're going to say, well, that doesn't surprise me a bit. Dozens of food processing plants suspiciously caught on fire over the past year. Remarkably, no one was present at the time of the fires. And I might add, while I haven't researched it, I'm hoping someone will, my guess is there's been no arrests either. Why? <laughs> because it's done with high technology, with scalar wave. The Echo Health Alliance whistleblower, bioterrorism excerpt, military veteran and scientist, Dr. Andrew Huff, as a possible explanation of the food supply fires. According to Huff, who, author, who authorities have harassed due to the nature of his work since 2019, the U.S. government coordinated the attacks on the food facilities, he says. But, in addition, something remarkable happened. The hard disk with the FASCAT data disappeared. Just an accident or an on-purpose. Since then, there have been about 200 food factory attacks around the world, most of them in the U.S., he explained. Now, got to interrupt there because I just want to tell you real quickly that I don't know if most of you knew this, but around the, the country, in America, and the world, but mostly in America, it was even on the news. Um, there's been over 200 attacks 
of just trying to destroy food plants, folks. Now, do you think that that's a coincidence? Some of it was blamed, blamed on weather. Others were blamed on fire. There was even a couple of planes that banged in or smashed into these food plants. But do you think that that's kind of unusual in the fact that we've never actually even had that ever happen before? Like in any history of time of the world, think about it. They're trying to dis destroy the food supply. And you might say, well, who is they? Okay, you want to know who it is? It's the Moloch and Baal worshipers. And who are they? Those are the people who serve L-U-C-I-F-E-R, right? Which is D-E-V-I-L, D-E-V-I-L, or otherwise known as Diablo, okay? <clears throat> and then if you doubt that, then I feel sorry for you because that's exactly what is happening. And so with, coupled with all of these things, with the swine flu and all these things they say is out there, which is a lie, and the destruction of the food plants, and then them killing the chickens and, and all of this stuff, and cattle. There was over 20,000 livestock uh, that we know of that was killed, right, and told that, oh, well, they died of of heat exhaustion and stuff during the summers, or uh, last summer, and it, it's that's not true. They, 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 I believe they poisoned those cattle and killed them all. But now they're they're injecting them with uh, you know the stuff I was just telling you earlier. You know what I mean? All right, uh, let's continue here. He also had <clears throat> another backup and analyzed the attacks. It turned out that the attacks exactly matched the most critical systems in this data set, meaning the hard drive was stolen, and they're attacking what they found the food systems they found on the hard drive. That's what he's really saying. He reported this to the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI, but never received a response. Have we, were we surprised? Okay, I mean, the Homeland Security and the FBI, are they really filled with Christians? Are they really filled with people that want to do the right thing? I think I've got an answer in just a second. Huff knows that the FBI and the food industry have tried to investigate what he calls terrorist attacks. But they're getting nowhere. It might, I might add that all of the investigations across the nation, when it comes to top people, are going nowhere. And I've got an explanation for that in just a second. He suspects that a government-funded actor or a globalist group like the World Economic Forum is behind it. Now, ah, remember I used to mention to you in all a lot of the videos, folks, about the WEF, W-E-F, World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab and the boys. Okay, they are just part of that cult that I was telling you about, okay, which controls everything, controls agriculture and all, all these things, because these are the considered the elites of the world, folks, okay? And by the way, shout out to Reggie, because I just remembered when Reggie, my good subscriber, was telling me to continue to put out this information about what's going on in the world with the NWO, New World Order, and stuff like that, right? So all tied in. Another great channel I mentioned before in another video, uh, a time for justice and a time for judgment. Those two channels are the same channel, the guy that runs it, and he's here on YouTube. You should check them out. I'll try to remember to leave links, but if I don't, search for them on your own. But anyways, you know, I'm grateful to be covering this stuff because you guys need to know about this because I... What good of a person would I be if I didn't warn you about what's coming? This is why I say we need to prepare as gig workers, like at least with lots of money and food and all kinds of stuff in case, you know, what happens if we couldn't do our jobs anymore? What if we couldn't deliver? What are you going to do? Right? So prepare now so it's easier for you down the road. You know what I mean? All right, continuing. We'll explain how it really works. <clears throat> I was sent this book in a PDF, and I must say, of all the books I've read in my life, this is one of the best. Uh, it was, I, it wasn't a paper book, so I can't say I couldn't put it down, but it's 187 pages, and in two days, I read like uh, about 137 of them. I'm almost finished. I will probably finish this tonight, which, by the way, I've arranged for this to be put up on the download section of prophecyclub.com. Huh. And it's called the an Illuminati Primer, and it tells you, bottom left here, where you can go to download and get that book free. 
In the book, it says it has become apparent in the legal system of the United States of America that there is a two-tier justice system at work. Well, we're not surprised, are we? Yeah, and what that means is justice for uh, a lot, uh, just no justice for a lot of people, and only justice or injustice for some. And what that means is. This is where it gets into the secret society stuff with the Masons and all of that. If you're familiar with that, folks, if you don't know what they are, there was a video that I put out. If you remember about a week or two ago, maybe three weeks ago, and in that, the name of the movie was The Brotherhood of the Bell. You guys may have passed over it and didn't watch it, but go back. I didn't. I did not name the video that, so it's it's hidden under other text but i think it's in red or orange or something you guys should watch that because it's very interesting when you find out how that system all works you'll understand what's going on now so he's going to continue to talk here about this about what i just said and while most attribute that to be a left-right political paradigm i think that it's more likely it's actually and i shouldn't say these names a lucif and a non-lucif split you gotta <laughs> read between the lines there in the article, it says Jesse believes that the free M's. He's uh, talking about the free Masons, right? It's one word, but it's two. I had to separate it like that, okay? Were created by Lucif as a way to hide themselves, hide what they did, and who were within a respectable shell organization within the community. She notes that the original name of the Lucif blah, 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 system was the Brotherhood of, or the Great White Brother. Blah. And at every level of the mm, the M, the vows, the culture, and the function of the group is about helping out fellow brothers. Now, here it is. The doc right. Now, let me give you a little, I have to give you a little background on this. So that secret organization vows to keep secrets and everything within themselves and they will even go against the laws of man and god to make sure that their own laws are uh held according to what their beliefs are so if someone's up for murder or something right and you were to go into a court or the judge was there and you were watching it and you ever see someone who's ever got off for murder it's because they have either showed that signs or, or it's there's secret handshakes and signals and things they can say so that the other person who is part of their cult can give them a pass and let them just walk on out of the court and say, oh, you're not guilty, right? Because they look out for their own. That's called the brotherhood, okay? Um, and so that stuff goes on. So anyways, continuing. Even goes as far as to help them cover up and keep secret their crimes or evil deeds. And did you get that? In other words, there is a group of people that have sworn, I mean, a death oath to keep secret the sins, the violations, the crimes of the rest of the people in the group. Yep. And unfortunately, it's a group in... And by the way, folks, I, I just got to tell you this, that I have over 25 years experience learning and teaching this stuff. I've read books. I've watched numerous documentaries i've interviewed people i know what i speak of to be true i i could i mean please come over to waking up the sheep over there because you'll see a whole bunch of videos that that can openly talk about this stuff i have to watch out what i say here but anyways continuing really really high places and that explains the reason we can't get anything done for the good guys and we can't seem to stop the bad guys from doing whatever they want to do. <laughs> it goes on to say, I've had to scratch out a lot of words here. This is the name of the organization, which I can't put in there. The R-A-M Oath includes the following. I furthermore promise and swear that I will assist a companion R-A-M when I see him engaged in any difficulty and will espouse his cause. In other words, I will agree with him if he's wrong, see espouse his car, cause so far as to extricate him from the same, whether he be right or wrong. I mean, that's against everything Jesus teaches right there. As a matter of fact, I'll read that again. I furthermore promise and swear 
And by the way, this is a blood oath. And by the way, if they don't do this, this is not just some little small oath. They can be killed over it. I furthermore promise and swear that I will assist a companion, R.A.M., when I see him engaged in any difficulty and will espouse his cause so far as to extricate him from the same, whether he be right or wrong. Furthermore, in other words, if your follow, fellow M brother commits a crime, you have sworn an oath to get him out of that crime or out of trouble he's in, the oath states. Another oath they take says, I will keep all secrets of the companion R.A.M. when communicated to me as such, or I knowing them to be such, without exceptions. So, if your fellow M, this is a local group. He's talking about the Masons, folks, okay? You know the name, it starts with an M. Has committed a crime, you will get him out of it. And keep it secret from everybody else. That is a pretty convenient cover for criminal acts. That's right. And that's the reason we can't get a lot of these bad guys rounded up in America. This is in contrast to the oath for the Master M which only obligates you to keep the secrets of a brother M with the exception of murder and treason. Now, let me go on to the next thing. This is brand new. Okay, so folks, you needed to know a, a bit about what's what's going on as far as the destruction of the food plants. The uh, They're trying to prevent transportation of certain items, getting to stores and this and that. And these are the people who run the show. And they're going to try to make it more difficult. And then I would say that a lot of the people who are running the organizations of the gig apps are also involved in all of this because these people are all of these type of people that we were just explaining in this video. So it's important you need to know that going forward. Okay, now this is Jason Meeks up here in the left top corner. You can see him. He's he been a member of the church uh, at over at Prophecy Club. I think they're in Texas now. Um... Anyways, this guy is the real deal because I've been watching <laughs> and listening to a lot of this stuff and I, I'm able to discern a lot of things, folks, and some of you are too. So hopefully you, I won't lose you here and you should keep watching because listen to this. This is a dream that God gave Jason Meeks. This is back a, couple, a few days ago, a couple of days ago because today is like the 17th. So he just got this one. One fifteen twenty three, right? Where do you hear what's what's coming, folks? Okay, and this is just one person, and God gives dreams to people so they'll pass it on to other people to help them in times of need to warn us. God is warning His children so we can prepare for these bad times that are coming, because the end times are coming, folks, and the tribulation is right around the corner. Okay. For any of you Christians that know what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. Just sent to me by Jason Meeks yesterday. Who's Jason Meeks? Well, as you recall, he's had a couple of other very powerful and important dreams that are put on the program. He's also a prophet. He's also a graduate of Leslie's School of the Prophets. Robbing food trucks and food shortage. He said, the dream starts out and I'm standing in line at a grocery store in a strip mall. Not standing inside the store, but outside with thousands of other people in line. We were all waiting to get in the store to buy food. The store was only letting a few people in at a time and the shoppers in the store had to purchase and leave before others were let into the shop. It looked like a 1970s communist bread line in the Soviet Union. People were waiting so long, some were getting their hair cut at a barber shop next door while someone else held their place in line. There was a waiting list to even get into the barber shop. You had to sign in for a specific time. When I got to the store, I went to purchase some eggs. When you went in, you could only buy a few items. There was no loading up your cart with whatever you wanted. Whatever you bought, you had to carry out in your hands or a small bag. I went to buy two big packages of jumbo eggs, but there were hardly any eggs there, and what there was there was cracked and no good. I managed to buy two cartons of small eggs. I knew the only way that we were going to make it was Joseph's Kitchen wheat. Now, now I, I got it. I got to stop there because I want to tell you about this. Okay, now, uh, Pastor Stan helped start a 
a storehouse called Joseph's Kitchen, okay? Because God gave him either a dream or a vision or something to or to help in the future because in other words there is a coming food shortage and stuff, right? In back in Pharaoh's time, back in the Bible, um, the the most prevalent form of food was wheat. They made, you know, wheat berries when you crush them, they become flour. And flour is made to make bread. And bread, if it's, you know, the organic grains, you can live off that for quite a while, folks, off of bread. Because for 40 years out in the desert, with King Herod chasing Moses and the prophets and all of that, right, uh, and all the people, they lived out in the desert for 40 years. What did they live off of? They ate bread, right? So he started a... A storefront that sells bread and all of that. So he's going to go over some of that in the video where you could purchase that stuff. You could purchase the stuff all on your own. You don't have to purchase it from him. But listen, a church or a, or a you know an organization has to rely on the members of the parishioners to continue their mission. If they don't, they're not getting checks sent to them from anywhere else but the parishioners. And we are commanded to help, you know, church members of at least good churches. There's a lot of bad churches out there, folks. So let the Holy Spirit learn which ones are bad and which ones are not. But the good ones we're supposed to support. So him and his daughter formed that, uh, f that food thing, and they're selling items to do that. There's nothing wrong with that because they're helping Christians, okay? So going forward, that's what he's talking about, Joseph's Kitchen here. I'm going to talk about Joseph's Kitchen wheat here in just a minute. And I know that you think you've heard this, but I think it's very important if you haven't heard it, if you haven't got some of it, you better be getting it because, in my opinion, it is about the best survival food out there, the best emergency food out there. So anyway, so he says, I knew the only way we're going to make it would be having the Joseph's Kitchen wheat. We had previously purchased the eggs would be used to make the bread. We could not have survived off the eggs alone. In the dream, we had already eaten everything in our house, all canned goods, peanut butter, etc. And the reason I went to get eggs was to supplement our bread made from Joseph's Kitchen wheat. This was months after whatever had caused the food shortage had hit. At this point, people were peaceful. But if you had more than a handful of food, they would take the chance and steal it from you. Then... The scene changed. I was in a Zoom meeting with people all over the country who were supporters of the Prophecy Club ministry, good, faithful Christians. You cannot release some important information publicly only by Zoom. The Lord had given you and Leslie dreams with prophecies about things that people must do to secure food for their family, as there were multiple supply disruptions in the nationwide food distribution chain. Joseph Kitchen was still going, still sending out, still receiving from it. Just getting it to the people was intermittent at this point in the crisis. Now, let me read that again. Now, what he means by intermittent in, in, intermittent in the crisis is there's going to be, there could be power failures, folks, that are going on. And I can guarantee you that that's actually going to happen. Because look what happened down in Texas. Okay, even the World Economic Forum has told, said that, oh, with it, right, they're the ones who are going to be creating these, these type of issues, right, because Lucifer is getting mad, the devil, and he wants to try to control the world. So what does he do? He tries to take away all of the things that we need to function, including food, water, medicine, uh, you know, uh, transportation, electricity, all of those things, okay? So, let's so apparently he saw in the dream that God is going to give me and Leslie some specific dreams for specific supporters of Prophecy Club that I won't be able to put out in this format. We won't be able to put it up on the internet for just anybody and everybody to go up there and get. Instead, the only way you get this is if you are on our email list. And the way you get on that email list is by sending a donation to Prophecy Club. Sorry, but that's the way it's got to be. Now, by the way, folks, with churches, okay, and I, and I, I, you know, you know how I am with my 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 channel and how I am with not accepting anything, and I don't monetize, okay. With churches in the Bible, 
and pastors and all that, in the Bible it talks, speaks about tithing to a church. We are supposed to give at least 10%, but you should give more to any one specific church or pastor or spiritual organization who brings you closer to God because that's how they survive in order to to continue their missions. They, they, they can't just survive on their own, folks. People think that church is a scam and all that. There are a lot of scam churches. I'd say 90% of them are scam, but there is about 10 or 11% of great churches out there. And I'll give you a real, a one real good one besides this one, folks. There's a channel on this on YouTube that's out of Simi Valley, California, and the name of that channel is Blessed Hope Chas, uh, Chapel. Blessed Hope Chapel. So B L E S S E D. Blessed, which we say blessed. Blessed Hope Chapel. Right. That's Pastor Joe Schimmel. S H I M M E L. Pastor Joe Schimmel, he does a Wednesday night Bible study, uh, and he also puts out, he has good good fight ministries. Uh, I would suggest him as a, as a good um, source of information, and also here, Pastor Stan, okay? And if you are a Christian and you're close to God, you will know that these people are, God will discern whether they're telling you the truth or not, folks. And if some of you will just believe that some of this is all kooky and wacky and you're a f- crazy conspiracy nut stupid fool, when in fact what you really are hearing is the truth, folks. It's just that people don't want to admit it because that would have to admit that their whole life was probably in shambles because the, the number one thing is that you're not following God. And you should be. All of us should be for salvation. If you want to be in the next world living forever because we don't live forever here on this earth, but we will in the next one if you follow Jesus Christ. All right, let's continue. I didn't set this up. This is what the man was shown in the dream, okay? The Lord had given you and Leslie dreams with prophecies about things that people must do to secure food. Now, I don't think that that means keep it from being stolen. I think it means this is what you must do if you want to get food. Leslie dreams with prophecy about things which, uh, which people must do to, I'll say, get food for their family. As there were multiple supply disruptions in the nationwide food distribution chain. Joseph Kitchen Did was... Did you hear still- that? There was disruptions in the, in the chain. Look what happened, folks. Do you remember back, was it not even six months ago, we were, he- we were hearing about the Chinese sh- container ships that were off the coast of California that weren't able to come in? Do you think that that's, that's a coincidence? Why were they not able to come in? Because they were being told to stay off to the coast. Then when they brought the food in, there was a lot of spoiled food that was coming in, like vegetables and, and, and fruits and all these things and meats that had all gone bad and expired after their time. And the people who control, listen, BlackRock controls almost all of the, the world's wealth, folks. And they control these companies and they can dictate who they want to send send food and who they don't and this and that. It's it's crazy what's going on. So it's time to prepare and make yourself self-sufficient so you don't have to depend on any one one source. Of course, the real one source you you need to depend on is Jesus Christ because he's the only one that's going to set you free from all of this. All right, let's continue. Going just getting it to the people was intermittent at this point in the crisis. Now I talked with I guess I'll go ahead and say this I talked with my daughter which is the owner of Joseph Kitchen I started it but I gave it to her and she's running it and by the way uh, because I'm busy with this and other things she's doing a much better job than I would have done but I specifically asked them okay so do you have plenty of wheat and all the wherewithal supplies you need she says, oh, yes, we have a lot. Well, I want to make certain that they have plenty because we know a food shortage is coming. As a matter of fact, I think this is the 15th one that is now saying there's a food shortage coming. All right, let's go on. There were many people on the Zoom call. You instructed me to go to work at UPS because the Lord had told you that they were going to be delivering eggs and grocery stores undercover. People were not robbing US, U, UPS trucks. Because they did not think there was any food on them, so bread trucks, 
beverage trucks, anything like that got hijacked. Other people who by the way, in other by cities. the way, folks, I don't know if some of you know of another a prophet named John Paul Jackson, but if you do, John Paul Jackson, he passed away in 2014 of cancer, but. He had a thing called the perfect storm, and he was well known for being a prophet, and he, he was a proven prophet. In other words, the things that he said, a lot of those things, almost all of them came true, and there's still things that haven't come true, but will come true in the future. And one of the things he said in one of the visions that God showed him is that food trucks would be trying to deliver food to certain establishments, and while the driver was inside trying to give the bill of lading and come back out people were cutting holes in the side of the trucks to try to steal the food because that's how bad it was getting because a lot of the food was getting stolen before it even got to to the the food uh stores so i could see why there would be shortages <laughs> that would be in the stores that people don't have because people were stealing it and that's how bad it got and the, this this is in the visions and the dreams of these prophets by the way all right had other instructions as to what to do specifically to get food for them. I went to work for UPS. We had a big brown 24-foot box truck and delivered eggs to the roughest section of the city. You were really taking your life in your hands to go into this area. And I was working with my cousin, a good man, but not saved. We had worked all day, and my pay was 2,000 medium eggs, not a paycheck. Do you hear that, folks? His paycheck was two dozen boxes of things of medium eggs. Two dozen of them. No paycheck and eggs. Just eggs. What does that signify? That means that some of these people, a lot of us, are not even going to be getting paid in the future. Do you know why we're not going to get paid, folks? Because they're switching over to a digital system. And this digital system is part of the M-A-R-K-O-F... T-H-E-B-E-A-S-T system, okay? And that system is the one that controls all of what we're talking about here, including transportation, including the gig economy and all of that. So, I mean, if <laughs> if the guy's working for eggs, because the Bible says that, uh, I think it's in the book of Daniel, I'm not sure, maybe 2 Corinthians can correct me on it, but it says something about a measured measured thing of wheat for a day's day's wages or something like that, where you'll be at literally working on a whole day just to get food to, to, to eat. It won't even be, and these are for the people who love and know and serve God. The other people will just sell out and go right into the system. And it says if you take the, the mock, which is in the right hand of the forehead, you will not, you will not be saved. You will not go to heaven. So don't Make sure you miss the mark and you don't take that, folks. All right? It's important. Let's continue. Just eggs. Thankfully, our new order from Joseph Kitchen arrived. I quit working at UPS because it was so dangerous. My cous cousin had to keep working because he was unprepared. I'm, I'm telling you, we have this is the 15th one that says that there's a food shortage coming. And I tell you right now, you need you need to make some preparations. You need to go to Joseph's Kitchen. I'll talk about that. Okay, go so to I'm I'm going to try to skip through this. Basically, he's going to tell you about the machine machine package that they have for sale and the stuff. And I'm not saying not to buy that stuff, but some of, you don't have to buy from him if you don't want to. But I would start saving some food up and all of these other things for the coming food shortages, folks, because they are real. All right, let me try to fast forward through this. Okay, let's see. Let me, okay, here we go. We're at the end of that, and I'm going to play the rest of what he was, the next pot that he needs to go into. They send you the wheat, the honey, the lecithin, uh, everything you need to make that, that loaf of bread. Everything you need. Six people, one year, about $700 a person at josephkitchen.com. Now, I want to back up and reread this again, make some points, some important points here. Okay, so... Dream starts out, he's standing in line at a grocery store at a strip mall. 
Do you think that's the way it's going to happen? I think it's saying that there's going to be grocery stores that people are standing in long lines. And when they get up there to get something to eat, there may not be. We've had this in other dreams. There may not be anything. One lady had a dream where she saw it where there was no more food in Walmart. There was things like cleaning supplies, but there was no food at all. All of the empty shelves. That was in another dream a lady said. The store was only letting a few people in at a time. Now, probably tomorrow I'll go through another dream where another lady saw exactly the same thing. People were waiting in long lines so long they were going to get a haircut next door. Then you could only buy a few items. Patty Travato saw the same thing in another dream she had back in 2004. Only buy a few items, and for you to even go there, you had to go and get registered. And if you didn't, weren't registered, then you had to go to like a sports stadium to stand in line for all day long to get registered. Now, folks, <clears throat> I just, just thought of something really important, so I'm going to add this in as the last part of the video because there's a video that I downloaded the other day, and there's another channel I want to tell you about called High Impact Flicks. High Impact Flicks. The, actually, the guy's name is Brian over on that channel. And if you go to his channel, there's a lot of things that uh, you'll learn about over there. But there's something really specific that he did a video on. And I'm going to tie it into this video because it just came to me. You know, the Holy Spirit put it on my heart to, to show it to you. So in a minute or two, I'll, I'll show you that. Let's just finish off with this part here. Just to get food. She says, he says, I went to buy two packages of jumbo eggs. But the hardly any eggs and then the ones that were there were not very good. And they were actually paying their people with eggs. Meaning that were, this is the same thing Dana Coverstone saw. That they're having to barter. Remember some guy bartered some, a handful of shotgun shells for, for some little baby chickens. I only knew the way we were going to make it was Joseph's Kitchen wheat. Because wheat, the way it comes to you in, in a seven-gallon pail... And that seven gallon pail is, is, is infused with nitrogen. While we don't know exactly officially how long it lasts, most people say probably 25 years and that kind of a ballpark. So it doesn't need refrigeration and it's going to last a long time. We say it's food for one year, but in you know, a time of trouble, you can probably make, make it last longer than that. In the dream, we're already had eaten everything in our house, all the canned goods, peanut butter, and the only reason we were going to be eating was because of Joseph Kitchen. So I would recommend you go to josephkitchen.com and get yourself some of this food. This was months after whatever caused the food shortage. I think that they're already in progress right now causing the food shortage. It's just that it hasn't been seen on the shelves yet. Yeah, see, this is what people have a hard time with. People are like, oh, bullshit. Look at all. I go in every store. There's, there's food beyond belief on the shelves. And I know... Because even for me, don't you think that it's hard for me to almost believe that? But I, I mean, folks, it only takes a couple of days for people to go in and wipe out all the shelves. Now, what if you don't have the money to actually go buy food? You can't. What are you going to go in and try to steal it? Hopefully, you won't, because you'll either get hurt, killed, or, or you'll end up in jail. Uh, that's where we need to trust in God. That God will provide through either other people or Himself, and He has. If even if He has to feed you out of His own hand. Because what did he do for the Israelites out in the desert for 40 years? He fed them with manna that fell down to them. And also with quail, because they complained about the, uh, the manna. And, and it was too, it was like cereal, you know. It's like a God's cereal <laughs> from heaven. I've seen it on video, too. It's actually, I've seen the real, I've never seen it in person. But I've seen it on video, what it looks like. It's kind of yellowish and looks like, you know, cornflakes almost, right? And, uh, you know, God's amazing. He can do anything. What did Moses do out in the, in the desert? He struck the rock, right, to bring water, right? And God provided, and all the clothes that the people were wearing, because they didn't, they couldn't take much with them, none of it ever became ripped or, or dis, dis becoming. It, was, it looked like it was brand new for the, the 40 years that those people were in the desert. Amazing, right? God can do anything. All right, uh, let me see. Let me try to finish off here, and I want to show you that next part real quick. There's still food on the shelves, and until the food disappears off the shelves, most people are never going to listen to this. Yeah, that? Until the food disappears from the shelves, no one will, a lot of people will never listen to it. It's like the wise virgins that prepared with the oil and the lamps, right? 
and the other people that didn't, they were left without anything, right? <clears throat> Don't be that person, folks. Be the person who prepares before this stuff happens. You still have time, okay? Um, and this is why I say this is going to affect our gig economy, folks, and what we do as workers. See, most of you are living in the, what we call in the world, right? You're not looking into the spiritual ramifications of, of everything because you may not be a Christian. So none of this makes any sense to you. And, I, and understandably so. But that's where you need to like say, hey, God, uh, you know, if you are real, can you uh, let me know you are? You know, he will let you know. You just have to and you have to be following him in doing his will and following his his commandments, by the way. The Ten Commandments is a good start. There's one other channel I want to mention to you before I forget. <clears throat> it's called Living Waters. Living Waters. It's here on um, on YouTube. You should check that channel out. Um, I can't remember. Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me think. I, maybe the Holy Spirit will let me remember. That's it. Ray Comfort. The guy's name is Ray Comfort. And I think he's from New Zealand originally or whatever, but he's in America and he has a ministry out in California. But you should start watching those videos, folks. Living Waters. And he's at livingwaters.com, by the way. But you can watch the videos here on YouTube. All right, let's finish here. And then I'm going to show you that part I needed to show you. And we're almost over with the video, folks. All right? But <clears throat> now's the time to send it out to them. Let them know. And then when it happens, they're going to be coming back to you saying, okay, you have my attention. What else do you need to tell me? I was in a Zoom meeting with people from all over the country who are supporters of the Prophecy Club ministry, good, faithful Christians. You could not release some of the very important information. So apparently in the dream, Leslie and I were given some dreams telling the people what they must do. But I wasn't able to put it on the program like I'm talking right now. So we had a Zoom call. Now, how would we let you know about the Zoom call? Well, we obviously can't let you know on this format here. So apparently, folks, remember how I mentioned even in other videos how they would shut down and censor the Internet and stuff? Apparently, we will, you, the, this is what's kind of funny and ironic. I mean, it's not funny, but even my channel, folks, and other gig channels and gig tubers who are out here, may not ever even be able to get on YouTube and people see them because the people are going to cut off that com that form of communication so no one are, is going to be able to talk to anyone. So the only way, only way you might be able to is through a Zoom call, like he said. And keep in mind, these are prophet dreams and visions that these people had of the coming future, like what's going to happen in the future. I don't know exactly when this is going to happen, but I would hope you would prepare for it as best you can Okay, and like I said, this message may be for a very few of you that will catch on to it and take it to heart and really follow through. The others, you might just blow this completely off and think it's foolish, and that would be the worst thing that you ever did. Trust me. All right, um, let me see. Let me just play a little bit more, and then I'm going to go right to that video like I was telling you. So what we <clears> would do is go to, the, to our emails, and if you want to be on that list, send a donation to Prophecy Club. That's how you get on the list. And all you got to do is even send two bucks, five bucks, whatever. If you do that, it's it's okay to send a donation to a church, folks. It really is. Maybe think, well, <laughs> can I just get on the list without a donation? Well, not really. I mean, I mean, why would we put you on the list? I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? Okay, it's, it works. Uh, the Lord is right because you need to help the, the the organization so they can continue to do their good works for Jesus. Period. <laughs> you and Leslie dreams about prophecies, about things that people must do to secure food for the family as there were multiple supply disruptions in the nationwide food distribution chain. Joseph Kitchen was still going, meaning it was still sending out food. And I'm going to say that probably <coughs> Joseph Kitchen is going to be one of the last places that is able to still send out food. It is specifically set up a company to be able to send out food in a time of trouble. And so specifically, they have stored up, kind of like Joseph. That's why we call it Joseph Kitchen. All right. I'm going to pause it here because the rest of the video is just a little bit advertisements on other things like noble gold investments and stuff like that or something like that, which is not bad because if you have money, you don't want to be stuck with money. You want to turn it into gold and silver. My suggestion, my own suggestion for you guys and gals is if you have any extra money laying around, you should go to coin shops, find 
gold or silver coins, preferably quarter ounce ones for gold, and uh, one ounce uh, or uh, one ounce uh, silver, uh, you know, rounds or whatever. Make sure they have an official seal of some government, either Canada, United States. It doesn't matter, but or you could even buy the bars if you want, <clears throat> and take do that because when they cut the whole money supply away, where you can't pass cash anymore, uh, you can at least trade or uh, you know buy and sell with gold or silver or something like that, or you can trade some things that you have, you know. And it's important you know all this stuff. Um, and one last thing I want to say about Pastor Stan. Pastor Stan is not some crazy kook idiot, okay? He's not He's not even a prophet. He's, he's a, a watchman and a messenger. But he has had some audible voices from God that have told him things in the past. And his wife, Leslie, is a prophet, okay? He has a daughter and he has a wife. They're both named Leslie. He has a daughter named Leslie and a wife named, named Leslie. And Leslie, the daughter, runs the, the Joseph's Kitchen, which is a good thing. But there's other sources of food and all that. It, but it would be cool to help help out that ministry plus get the things you need. And he does, it ha he does have it cheaper than a lot of other places, I can tell you that. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the final section of this video. Here we go. Okay, folks, so to finish off this video here, I want to just make you some of you aware of what's going on in certain grocery stores so you can check this out. Now, one thing I'll say is that in order to bring this type of system and all of these crazy things that they want to bring into the world, they can't just do it all at once. They do it incrementally. You know what incrementally means? It means inch by inch, inch step by step. In other words... They slowly introduce certain programs and things. That's sort of like what DoorDash does to us with, uh, you know, Top Dasher and uh, accept more, earn more crap, okay? And they test it out in markets and then they bring it in and then all of a sudden it's prevalent across the entire country or the world or whatever, okay? This is, um, this happens to be a Whole Foods store. I think this is up in Washington, right? says you have to have a QR, a QR code to even enter the store. That means your phone will be used as a, you know, a QR code or you'll have one on your phone so you can even enter a grocery store. And if you don't have this QR code, and what is the QR code, code entitle you to, to do? To shop, to buy and sell. What does the Bible talk about, about being able to buy or sell in Revelation 13? Go and read it, folks, okay, if you think this is a joke. And then in another words, you would say that this is the automatic intelligence, the AI that they're bringing out, that people just think, oh, this isn't going to happen here, right? Other channels who have said that, oh, that'll never happen in our lifetime. Well, guess what, folks? It's already here. And there's a lot of things I can't say here in this final video but please do your own research and find out that what I'm telling you is the truth because I've always told you the truth on this, on this channel, folks. This is a plethora of truth. But you have little, very little time to get prepared for this stuff, okay? I've known about this for 20-something years. And it's weird, too, because I look back and I look to where I was then and where I am now and I, it's, it's almost like a horror movie. It's almost like George Orwell's 1984, okay? So this, this guy on the right-hand side, his name is Brian, and he's from a channel called High Impact Flicks, and his channel ended up being censored and all that, and then eventually it came back. He has another channel called Grease, Grease Monkey Videos, Grease Monkey Videos that you might want to go and sub to. And this guy, he, although he's not a Christian, it's funny because he I guess he's not a Christian, but he... He's really like more of a constitutionalist and a, and, a, and a really good patriot American. But it's funny how he shows all these things that are biblical from the Bible that the Bible speaks of, okay? Because the Bible is unfolding true to our eyes right now, all right? Check this out, folks. You want to talk about being able to even go into a store and buy food in the future? Listen to this. Ha <laughs> ha. Other news, I don't know when the last time you've been to a Whole Foods, it's been a long, long time for me, but check this out, it says, 
at this Whole Foods store, you have to use a QR code even to enter the store. This is in, in, totally insane, folks. So basically, you cannot get into the Whole Foods market in Washington, D.C. You can't even you get into it unless QR you have the QR code. Doing. Oh, I forgot to mention to you. What will that entail for you to why you would have that? Because guess what's tied to the QR code in your phone? The V A double X. The J A B that they want to put into your arm. Okay? If you don't have that, you ain't gonna be able to go into the store and shop. Okay? And if you think that, that this isn't coming nationwide, watch what happens, folks. I know what I'm talking about. All right, let's continue. Which I'm assuming means you have to download a Whole Foods app, get the QR code, you know, put your phone on the little scanner right there. So now they know when you've gone in, when you're going to leave, but you can't have access to it unless you have the QR code. I, I think the answer to this right here, because we have technology moving in, we have AIs trying to study us, we have a cashless society that they're trying to move in, and that kind of ties into this right here. It says in Montreal, they're experiencing a new phenomenon. Some companies are now saying no to cash. From what I understand from back of Shamil in New York, he said that the same thing is happening at C CVS's and other pharmacies in New York where they're no longer accepting cash. Check this out. Huh. So no cash, they're accepting cards only. You can't get into Whole Foods or at least this Whole Foods right here unless you have a QR code, which is going to be on an app on your phone. This is all getting you into the M-A-R-K-O-F-T-H-E-B-E-A-S-T -E -E system. Okay, this is what it's all about, folks. And this is where it's, where it's leading. And you might say, oh, that's just technology. Everything's one. I think it'll make everything easier. No, there's a, there's a more nefarious purpose to it. Okay? And that is what the bible describes of revelation 13 you need to go and watch you need to go and read revelation 13 through 21 folks even if you're not a christian because it's a big eye opener okay all right let's continue this is almost over and they want to go to a cashless society one of the <clears throat> things that you can you can literally vote with your dollars and say hey whole foods if this is how you're going to treat customers and we can't enter without a qr code we're not going to enter and just let this go all the way, work, it, work itself through the system. Hey, CVS in New York, if you're no longer going to accept cash, then we'll go somewhere else. That's what's good about competition. Competition will eliminate this kind of nonsense. And CBDCs is not something, the central bank dig digital currency, that's not something we want to come online as an option. Not even an option. Because what they'll do is they'll move the CBDC in, and then they'll eliminate cash. They'll He's talking about central bank digital currency. Eliminate credit cards. They'll eliminate debt, and it's all going to go toward that one thing. And that is the 100% elimination of all of your freedoms. If they can track and trace whatever you buy, whatever you sell, wherever you go, whoever yep. you're with. No more yard sales with cash. No more putting, you know, giving uh, your five-year-old nephew, uh, you know, stuffing some cash into a, a birthday or a Christmas card. No more of that. It's all gone. And this is the future of all grocery stores. So if you want more information on this, I'll get it to you. But this is the future of all grocery stores. Yep. I mean, I'm going to have to boycott Whole Foods. And, you know, folks, do you know how fast that they can implement this whole entire system in every single store? They've already tested this out in markets. They're testing this out in Seattle right now and other places. And it's already come into other parts of the world. I think it's in... Uh, Tel Aviv or over in, uh, where is it, uh, Saudi, some part of Saudi Arabia or whatever. But the point of it is, you know how they put in those checker things, you know, like uh, those scanners where if you walk out of the store, the thing goes beep, 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 beep. If you have something on you that, you know, or someone steals something because they have all of those like RFID chips in them, okay, which they want to put into you, by the way, and that's what's in the... The J-A-B, by the way, that goes in your arm, right? Um, and so uh, <laughs> what they want to do is um, 
they want to put it, or they can easily put those like those scanner things in and implement it with a, a little bit of software and voila the next day the store has that you understand how quick this can come in and how quick it is going to come in you watch what happens in in the soon watch <laughs> And that is the answer. This cannot be the, if this is the future of all grocery stores, we can control and command our future by saying, you know what? Well, see, this is where it comes, where Brian's going to interject here and say his own opinions and how he thinks, you know, we can do this and we can do that. And that's all good and noble. But the Bible clearly says that no man may buy or sell, save he had the mark or the number of his name. Let he who has wisdom reckon the number of the beast, for it is a number of a human and that number is 666 right and man is not going to overcome it says that the devil will or the antichrist will overcome the, the power of the saints and if he can overcome the power of the saints he can certainly overcome people who who are already given themselves to, to the devil because they're not saved by the blood of jesus christ yet right so I mean, this is this sounds totally nuts, crazy, science fiction, whacked out horror movie stuff, doesn't it? But this is where we are, folks, in 2023. It's pretty sad. All right, let's. I think there's another minute here, and I'm gonna. I'll end the video here. Screw it. We're not. We're not doing that. Not going there. <clears throat> They'll realize real quick when their bottom line, their bottom line dollar, takes a nosedive. Oh, I got to have my phone. Oh, I got to have a QR code. Oh, I got to have CBDCs. Oh, you don't accept cash. Well, forget it. I'm not going to be a part of this anymore. This right here, people are saying this is a deep fake. I don't think this is... Okay, so he gets into some other stuff in the video. But I wanted, I just wanted to show you that, folks, because it's, it's tied into everything that I was telling you about food and all that. Now, one last final message here. I want to thank each every each and every one of you who have come to this video, watched it all the way through, and absorbed 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 it into your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, and who can really discern it and really know the truth of it. The other people that don't, I feel sorry for you, but please don't uh, unsub from the channel because I have other wonderful things to share with you in the future, folks. <laughs> you know, uh, because I love all of you, love each and every one of you. I think you know that by now. Hopefully you do. Um, so, and one other final thing is that don't, one thing I want to say is don't, don't fear, don't fear the devil. Don't fear what's coming, folks. Fear the Lord because the fearing the Lord is the beginning of wisdom when you fear the Lord, right? And I'm saying in a good way, trust in the Lord because the Lord will will make things a lot better for you and go a lot better because times are going to get real tough, folks, and you're going to have to make some decisions. And those some of those tough decisions are even about like leaving your job, quitting your job. I don't think any of us, any good Christians, are going to be doing some of the jobs we're doing now. We, we may not even have a job. We may be living out in the woods. Who knows? But times are going to get tough, folks. I know this this video was shocking for a lot of you, or you were probably like blown away by it. And I'm sorry that I had to burst your bubble, but you 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 definitely needed to see this. And what you do with the information is up to you. But I would hope that you research a lot more and you help your fellow brothers and sisters in your family because they need you. Some of your family is lost, and I don't even have to tell you that. Some of you aren't even talking to your family because you have enmity. You have strife between you and your mother, father, brother, sister. Because some of these issues that I've talked to you about have affected you already in your life leading up to right now. Some of you are living in your cars. And I commend you for, for not giving up. And, and, and hey, at least you have a roof over your head. That, that car roof is a roof over your head that's protecting you from the elements, right? Right. So praise the Lord, thank, thank God. And know that I love each and every one of you out here. But God loves you more, folks, because he created you. All right? So with that said, I want to thank all of you for watching this video. You get a, a medal pinned upon your chest by me in the spirit, <laughs> so to speak. God's pinning that medal on your chest because I give you an A-plus for getting to the end of the video, Okay. So, all right, folks, I'm going to, I guess I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you take this information to heart and you trust it and believe it because it is the truth. 
With that said, have a wonderful night, and I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care.